Hey, good morning and welcome back to the Guillemot Kayak Shop. I'm Nick Schada and we're working on the Micro Bootlegger Sport Strip Built Sea Kayak. In the last episode, I finished gluing up the combing and just about completed scraping out the interior of both the deck and the hull. In this episode, I'll clean up the combing and sand out the interior of the deck and hull. We'll see how far we get. There's a few drips where epoxy came through while glassing the other day, so I'm just going to clean those up with a rasp. So I'm going to use a round over bit on a router to create the transition from the underside of the deck here to the inside of the riser. I have the router bit set up in the router base, rounds over just flush with the base. I'm going to go all the way around the perimeter as best as I can with the tool. So it'll work great back here. When I get over to the sides here, the uh, router base is too large diameter to actually get tight up against there. So I'm just going to have to end up coming by with a rasp and clean that up by hand. But I'll get everything I can. Um, around from here to here and around from there to there with this tool and that'll give a really nice radius on the inside surface there. Routers are loud with some hearing protection. Now for the rest of it, there's a rasp. Now I'll flip it over and round over the top side. I'm going to start sanding the interiors. There's a lot of places where the power tools won't work just because the radiuses, the interior radiuses are too tight. But with the large flat bottom on the kayak here, I can get a lot of this with the power sander. And then up with the sides that are largely flat, I can use it with the smaller Rotex 90. Um, a little harder to get into the interior of the deck because it's much more curved where this has flat sections. But in order to help conform to it, I'm going to use an adapter pad on all of these, really soft adapter pad. I'm going to start sanding with 40 grit sandpaper. It seems awfully aggressive, but I don't really care about the scratches on the inside. And, and as a point of fact, I kind of like some deep scratches. I'm going to be putting carbon Kevlar on the interior here. So you won't be able to actually see the wood. Given that, I don't care about the aesthetics of what the wood is like. I want to maximize the bond strength between the, the cloth and the wood. And so having deep key scratches in the wood will help the epoxy bond. So my thought is with the 40 grit, I'll get good deep scratches, but probably deeper than I need. I, I think it might make the wood absorb more epoxy than it really needs to. I don't think I really need to worry about it. I'm just thinking I'll go over it with 40 grit to get everything leveled out, then come back with 60 grit to smooth things out a little bit. So I'll start out with the power tools, do as much as I can with that, and then come in and hand sand with the 40 grit and get the parts that the power tools just won't reach you know in the hard sharp corners in this area up in the ends um, around the combing different places there's just 
some places where the power tools just aren't going to do it. So again, we're going to think about being systematic, so we're not just randomly going over the whole boat. We're going to work our way down one side, then the other, and as much as we can in the crisscross pattern. Some places it's so narrow that really all you can do is go back and forth, but um, we're not moving fast. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. We're just trying to get a good, even finish without ripples due to the strips. I've tried a lot of things for hand sanding the interior. What seems to work best for me is using really coarse grit on some sort of a shaped sanding block. Here it's a chunk of wood with a piece of uh, sanding belt wrapped around it. These are chunks of foam. This is mini cell foam. This is standard pink insulation foam. Here I have a chunk of mini cell foam where I've punched it full of holes have a port here where I can hook up my hose for dust collection and use the Abernet um, sandpaper on this. This is relatively effective, doesn't solve all the problems, but just one idea. You can buy a two inch thick piece of foam pretty reasonably at the home center and then cut, cut it with a bandsaw to just about any profile you want and you can have a whole bunch of different profiles. I found something like this, sort of a graduated curve, tends to work pretty well. You can generally find a part of it that matches the curve of the boat you're working on. If you don't have a sanding disc, a piece of sanding belt works pretty well too. With the hand sanding, look for places where your power tools and the scraper haven't gotten yet. Sometimes it's appropriate to just grab the scraper again. Um, but let's see if we can, we have some of the pencil lines left over, a little bit of glue left in here. It's a little bit of a groove in there. Again, we're not trying to sand away the groove, we're trying to sand away the material on either side of the groove. It's hard to get this top edge safely 
with the power tools. You want to be careful not to come up and round over this edge. And with the power tools, that's a little bit tricky. Coming in with a hand sander right along that top edge, get that cleaned up well, is a, a good way to go about it. I've got my hand backing it up so I can put a little bit of pressure on there. If you just let it flex, it's hard to get a good sanding job done. I've said it before, but it's probably worth saying again. When you're doing the sanding, again, what we're trying to do is basically fare the interior of the boat. This is not a spot operation. It's not something I see a little problem and I'm going to just deal with that little problem. Usually the only reason you will see something is it's lower than the material around it. So in order to get rid of the problem, you don't sand the problem itself, you sand the material around it and you want to blend it in where the scraper should have done a good job of getting rid of the bulk of the material at this point with the sanding we're trying to blend so we're getting in there if you, if you see a place where there's a little bit of an overhang or something we don't try to get in and sand the glue out from under that overhang we try and remove the high spot above the overhang These sanding belts work pretty well because they're stiff enough if you need to get up into the narrow section here, which is sort of too small to have a sanding block, and there's barely enough room for your fingers, you can just fold a piece of the belt and it's stiff and you can get in there and, and work on the stuff that needs working on. And really you want to feel in there, feel for rough spots. And again, I've got a little overhang here. Sand it until it's gone. If you have a line of glue or something that just doesn't go away with sanding, don't be afraid to just grab a scraper. It'll do in seconds what it might take minutes to accomplish with the same paper. So now I'm going to go over the whole interior again with 60 grit. I had vacuumed it out to get rid of any of the sanding gravel from that 40 grit. I don't want to end up making scratches in the surface due to remaining grit from the previous sandpaper.
I've got everything sanded out the next step will be putting the fabric on the inside like I said my plan is to put carbon Kevlar on the interior I probably won't do the whole interior with carbon Kevlar it's not the lightest material I'm gonna put it on the hull the whole hull um, I'll probably put either carbon Kevlar or pure carbon around the cockpit just to stiffen that up a bit and then the rest of the the deck I'll probably do with s glass just a little discussion about what I've used for fabric so far. I've used four ounce fiberglass. The deck is E glass, which E stands for electric. Um, that's your standard fiberglass. It basically is manufactured to make us printed circuit boards. And then there's on the hull, I've got S glass. That's a high strength glass. And the reason I used S glass on the hull is it's stronger. The reason I used E-glass on the deck is it wets out clearer. The S-glass is perfectly clear but it tends to have a little like index of refraction thing going on so it sort of slightly distorts the grain underneath it. It can be hard to detect but I just I decided I'd go for the strength on the hull and I'd go for the clarity on the deck. On the interior I'm going to go with the Carbon Kevlar, it's primarily for aesthetics. The carbon fiber adds stiffness on the inside, which is a good thing. Maybe not wholly necessary. This is a pretty stiff layup already, given the thickness of the cedar. And the Kevlar, again, I'm using it primarily for aesthetic reasons. The yellow Kevlar and the black carbon fiber together look kind of cool. But in a real life situation, the carbon Kevlar, again, the carbon's adding stiffness and the Kevlar is adding overall toughness. Um, so what will probably happen if, if the customer goes out and plays in the rock garden and ends up really screwing up and lands really hard on a rock, the carbon fiber will probably break. The carbon fiber is not all that strong in that kind of a situation. It's a little bit brittle. But what will happen is the Kevlar then would take all the load. Um, and in doing so, it would hold all the pieces together. Kevlar really doesn't want to tear. In my experience, I've actually taken one of my boats out and playing in a rock garden, hit a cliff really hard, and completely stove in the side. Um, the deck was cracked all the way through. But I had the carbon Kevlar interior. The outside glass was completely cracked. Water was getting into the wood but the Kevlar held everything. So I was able to paddle away from that situation. No water got into my boat. I, you know, again, I paddled away, paddled the rest of the day, had a good time. The boat, even though it was severely cracked, was completely holding together and was watertight. So it was a perfectly usable boat at that point. Obviously not as strong as it was before running into the rock. It was a completely safe boat to paddle home in rough condition. So again, Carbon Kevlar is primarily aesthetic. I like the looks of it. I think it looks cool, but it can have some real world 
significance. And like I said, I'm contemplating carbon fiber on the interior of the deck, again for stiffness around the cockpit area where the heaviest loads are as you get in and out of the boat. Um, again, stiffness in that situation is good. Carbon fiber isn't necessarily actually the strongest there. The S-glass is very strong stuff, and in the kind of use a kayak gets, the uh, S-glass is probably stronger than the carbon fiber. But for stiffness again, so the boat doesn't flex too much as you're getting in and out, I think I might go with carbon fiber right around the cockpit. And for strength, the rest of the deck, interior with S-glass, I have the S-glass, it's stronger than the E-glass. I don't care about the clarity as much on the interior, so I'm still thinking about it, but I might go with the S-glass on the interior at the ends of the boat, carbon fiber in the middle, carbon Kevlar interior on the hull, and see how it looks. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're enjoying this series, hit subscribe, turn on notifications. If you're really gung-ho and want to help support the production of these videos, head over to my Patreon site and chip in a little bit. I really appreciate your support. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.